Splay Shoes just jumped to the forefront of making barefoot shoes that don't make you feel like this. Their new street style takes all the classic styling of a van slip-on and pairs that with attributes that let your feet function the way that they're supposed to. But what compromises were made along the way? My brother Chris and I answer that and other questions in today's video. As always, there are timestamps down in the description if you want to jump around, but let's send it over to Chris to start us off with his likes of the shoe. Getting into my likes of the new street style slip-on from Splay, the first thing that I want to talk about is the toe box. Now, here's the interesting thing. I think a lot of people thought that all of the 2.0 shoes were gonna take on the same shape and form of the Freestyle 2.0s, but if you look at them, you can tell that the shape is very different. The shape of this shoe actually is way more like the new Splay 101. They also have the same outsole and they both have that big white rubber bumper that is very classic for this kind of canvas shoe. It has that 101 toe box and I actually really, really like that toe box. The next thing I wanna mention is that the higher tongue looks better in my opinion. I don't know if you're gonna be able to really tell with these next to each other. Not so much based on the shape of the shoes, just looking at them side by side, but the tongue on the old slip-on is definitely lower on the foot than the new slip-on. Not only was that uncomfortable for me, but I also thought it looked kind of weird. So having that tongue come up a little bit higher on my foot towards my ankle is something that I actually really like. The last thing I want to mention is even though we have have some added stack height. We went from a five millimeter base stack height on the original slip-on to a six and a half millimeter base stack height here. If you take the insole out with the insole in, more around 10 and a half millimeters. And even with that rubber bumper, we still have a really good amount of flexibility, which is something that people just love from Splay. So I'm glad they didn't compromise on that specific aspect of the shoe. With my likes of the new slip-on 2.0, the street style slip-on out of the way, I'm gonna pass things over to Eric to talk about his likes of the shoe. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about four different likes here. I'm gonna talk about the look of the shoe, the upgraded comfort, I'm gonna talk about the price, and then talk about its durability. So let's get into the look of the shoe. We've always said that Splay shoes are the perfect replacement for your Vans, and as you can see with the first version of the slip-on, that's pretty true in this case, but they've taken it to another level with the street style. So you've got this white bumper now that comes up pretty high. You've got this black stripe. You even have this little rubber logo right in the back there. All of those things have taken their inspiration from Vans and this would be very, very easy to confuse with a Vans shoe. And that's one thing that I love about what Barefoot Brands are doing now. They are trying to integrate these shoes into everyday society as much as possible. We just did a video on the Field Grounds High Rise Courtside and that shoe looks just like an Air Jordan. It fits in super well with anybody who's wearing those, and this fits in even better now with people that are wearing Vans. And I said that the high-rise courtside was probably the best disguised barefoot shoe out there, and now I think it has some competition with this one. It looks really, really good. Okay, so when it comes to the upgraded comfort, again, let's go back to the first iteration of their slip-on shoe. And two things with this that weren't very comfortable. The first is the elastic part right here in the midsole. And that was just a little bit too tight. After I wore it for about an hour, I wouldn't feel that anymore. But every time I put my foot into the shoe, I noticed how that squeezed across the top of your foot. And this one really does not do that at all. They've totally fixed that aspect of it. The elastic part is just really nice and really comfortable. They've also added a little bit of stack height. So this is now six and a half millimeters plus a four millimeter insole. And I can't remember exactly what this one is, but it's much thinner. And I think that that added stack height is going to give you a little bit more comfort. It's going to take away some ground feel. I'm going to get into that with the durability a little bit more. But I think there's a trade-off there, and this one is a little bit more comfortable underfoot. There's more squish with that insole for sure, and I think for most people, you're going to find that more comfortable. For anybody looking for as much barefoot feel as possible, then that might not be a welcome upgrade, but for me, it was. 
Okay, now when it comes to the price, these things are $65. Now, I went on the Vans website to look at the prices of their slip-on shoes. I saw some for $55, I saw some for $65. You're not losing out on anything price-wise by picking up a pair of Splay shoes. I think you're getting more value, actually, because they actually let your foot function the way that it's supposed to. All right, and now let's talk about the durability and that balance. So these barefoot shoe companies are trying to give you as much ground feel as possible. They're trying to let your feet function as if they have nothing on and the first iteration did that really really well these things have a ton of ground feel but that came at the cost of durability we heard from a lot of people that they were blowing through the outsoles and that there was some delamination going on I think that they fixed that with the street style but it sacrificed those barefoot qualities so now you're not gonna get as much ground feel and you're gonna get a little bit less flexibility than the original one but again I think it's a worthy trade-off I think that this is gonna be a much more durable shoe you're gonna get more bang for your buck out of it and it's something that I really like about it okay before sending it back over to Chris let's talk about affiliate links and today's is splay shoes it's a company that we really like we really liked their first lineup of shoes their first edition and everything that they've been coming out with the second versions of their shoes have been really great upgrades we like what's going on with splay shoes right now they have an update to their freestyle which we think they did a good job with there's the splay 101 which is a shoe that we did not know was coming at all and now we've got this awesome slip on style use the link down in the description to get to their website website and go see what else they've got for you. Are you looking to take your barefoot shoe experience to another level? Then you're going to need a solid pair of toe socks that lets you take advantage of all that toe box. We love Creepers Toe Socks, a sock that beat out six other toe sock brands in a comparison video we did that you can see through the card up in the corner. Whether it's cold or hot, whether you're hiking, running, or lounging, Creepers Toe Socks will ensure that your feet stay comfy, dry, and healthy. If you're interested in checking out Creepers, head down to the link in the description and use our discount code to save yourself 15 percent off at checkout getting in my dislikes of the new slip on 2.0 the first thing i'm going to mention is going to be an improvement for a lot of people but for me i think they went too far in the other direction it's going to be the volume the added volume which is fantastic because the volume on the original was too low for a lot of people me included it was a little too tight on the top of my foot it did break in a little bit but not enough in my opinion this guy has a lot of volume, obviously not adjustable because there's no laces, so it's not gonna get any tighter. I actually did something extremely sinful for the barefoot world, and that is I wore this a bit with two insoles in. So the original three millimeter insole that Splay used to send with all their 1.0 shoes and the new four millimeter insole. So seven millimeters added to this, making it a total stack height of 13 and a half millimeters, taking away from that minimalism that I love from Splay. Now, I'm not going to recommend you do that. Maybe the volume will be great for your foot, but I found it to be just a little too much for me. I don't like my foot sloshing around too much in my shoes. The only other dislike that I had of this shoe was the weight increase. I haven't weighed these, but the old slip-on is definitely significantly lighter than this guy. Those are two kind of bad combinations to have together. Too much volume and added weight is gonna make this shoe feel a little bit clunky for people who are in a similar volume of your foot boat with me. Now the good news is neither of these things are deal breakers for me when it comes to this shoe. I do find that the shoe overall is comfortable and performs really well in the kinds of things that you're gonna wanna use a slip-on for. With my dislikes of the new slip-on out of the way, now I'm gonna pass things over to Eric to talk about his dislikes of the shoe. Okay, when it comes to dislikes, there really isn't much for me to say here. I know Chris mentioned the volume of the shoe in the toe box that it might be a little bit too much now, but I think that that can easily be countered by using the insole that it has as well as wearing a pair of socks. So I might put in another plug for Paluva's toe socks because they have a no-show toe sock. Gives you that little bit of extra inside there that can cover that extra volume that these have. So I don't think that it's that big of a deal. And besides that, I really can't think of anything I think that they knocked it out of the park with this shoe. I think that it's priced super well. I think it's a massive upgrade as far as comfort goes from the first iteration of their slip-on shoe, and I think it looks awesome. I don't think you could go wrong picking up a pair of these for your everyday casual barefoot slip-on sneaker. Back over to Chris now so that he can give you the outro to the video. 
Getting into my final opinion of the Slip-On 2.0, I think it's an overall improvement. This is the same thing I've said with all of their 2.0 versions so far. They took what they had originally and they did make it better. I thought it was a really interesting choice to go with making it more like the 101 and less like the new Freestyle 2.0, but I think overall it fits. I think they took a lot of their inspiration from exactly what Vans is doing with their styling and then just put it in a more barefoot platform, which I think is a really smart move. A lot of people want to still have the traditional look of traditional shoes, but they want that toe freedom in the toe box. They want a little bit more minimalism in the sole itself. They want that zero drop. So not a bad move from Splay here with what they did with the slip on. Again, I had some drawbacks that I don't love about it, but overall, I think it's definitely improved and I would recommend it especially at the price compared to other barefoot shoe brands 65 bucks for this thing even compared to vans themselves these things are going to be fighting for some market share so if you're interested in checking these out make sure to head down to the link in the description and go check them out on Splay's website folks if you like this video we would appreciate it if you'd like subscribe comment and share all those things really help us out if you're interested in checking out any of the products that we talked about in this video there will be links down in the description to those products and if we have discount codes for those companies those will be featured with the links if you want more content from us there's a couple different places where you can get it the first one is the most exclusive content that you're not going to see on any other platforms that we work on it's also a place where you can help the channel out financially if you want to do that that is our patreon page again we have behind the scenes looks at all the products that we're working with on patreon and you're not going to see that stuff anywhere else it's also only one dollar a month to subscribe to our patreon we'd love to see you over there make sure to follow along with us on instagram if you want to be most up to date with the different products that we are working with every product that comes into our hands i do an unboxing of and post to instagram i also do little product highlights here and there as well but if you want that content make sure to go and follow along with us there on instagram one of the coolest places you can follow along with us is strava which is a social media platform where you can track all of the different activities that you do so we track our runs our trail runs our paddle boarding our hiking our weightlifting it all gets tracked on Strava and then we post about the different products that we're working with during those activities in those posts so if we go for a run we'll post videos of the shoes that we were running in and we can also leave little mini reviews of those products as we're going along if you're interested in any of that content make sure to go and follow us on Strava where we will follow you back we're glad you're here we appreciate your view and as always we will catch you in the mountains.